I am taller than you. Much, How much taller are you? Five seven. I'm five nine. I'm bigger than you guys. I know, but you should be sitting there. My hair is taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just responding, Carrie. Okay. Um. So we are here at is it Washington University? Washington College. Washington College. Okay. Yeah. College of Mortuary Science. Okay. Hi guys, it's hey. us again. We are here at the Warsham College of Mortuary Science Restorative Arts Lab. And we thought this would be a great opportunity to just reflect on our experiences in mortuary school. So, yeah, mortuary school was like the best time of my life. Mine too. Yeah. I mean, aside from like giving birth and you know, those good times, but it yeah. really was one of the best times. Yeah, and I was talking to um, Dee Dee earlier, and I was telling her the people and the friends that I made mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. mortuary school. I've heard veterans and people that have been in the Army and military and Navy talk about their combat buddies. Yeah. I feel like those people are my combat buddies because we went mm -hmm. through hell in that 11 months just studying like 28 classes mm -hmm. and restorative arts, making these heads, and yeah. just learning and going through the emotional part of accepting mortality yeah. and learning about people and the way that they die and how to take care of, care of them. I mean, for me, it was a little bit traumatic, mm. but I got through because of those people. We yeah. pushed each other. We didn't let each other give up. And coming back here, it just, it's almost it emotional. It back, doesn't yes. it? That's why I love coming to the mortuary schools, I think, because it takes me back to such a important and crucial time for me as a person. You know, mm -hmm. I think like since school I've become all these other roles like as a mother and things and so thinking back to a time when it was me and me becoming this awesome version of myself and yeah. really defining my likes, my dislikes, who I was, kind of my role that was going to be hopefully for the rest of my life. That was a really big, I got goosebumps talking about, it's a big part of your experience I think going on going into the business and such. Yeah. Um, we were talking yesterday about how some programs are designed to only get you to pass the national right. board exam. And that's something that I talk about a lot. Um, and we were basically told that where I went to school, which was Gupton Jones in Atlanta. Wonderful school, loved the instructors, loved everybody I met. But coming here to Warsham, it's almost like a more comprehensive mm -hmm experience from what I can tell. Of course, I haven't sat in any class right. or anything, but just walking through the building and getting a vibe for what the students are learning here, I mean, it's very impressive, and I feel like their mission goes a little bit further than just passing the national board exam. Yeah. What school did you go to, Karen? When did you, when did you graduate? Uh, Cincinnati, okay. College of Mortuary Science, and I graduated in two, what grade? 2001. Okay. I was done in 2001. Now, how old were you when you went? Right after my first, so I was 22-ish. I went right after my first bachelor's and went right down there to school. Okay. Um, and then graduated and got licensed. Hold on, you went to school for something else? Yeah. What did you go to school for? Psychology. Psychology. Really? I have a bachelor's in psychology and then the bachelor's in more science. That's a beautiful marriage, especially with working with people who are dealing with grief, like fresh yeah. when it happens. Yeah. I didn't know that about you. You keep surprising me. No boring. <laughs> yeah, I actually went to college before uh, mortuary school as well. I went for business. Okay. I thought I was going to be like this big shot hospital administrator. Oh. And I wanted to own the salon because I had done hair before and had my cosmetology okay. license. So, but yeah, mortuary school changed me as a person. It really matured me mm -hmm. and made me realize like you only really get one life mm -hmm. and. There are a lot of people in the world who have it a lot worse than you do, so stop bitching about the things yes. that you are bitching about and get focused and do something with your life. Um, how did mortuary school change you as a person if it did at all? I think when you can live in a space that you are not explaining any of your choices and your thinking and you don't have to talk about your classes or like you're all living the same kind of path at the moment. So I don't need to explain that I studied 
you know, how to make a nose today in school, and I don't have to give any jokes that are stupid about it. Mm -hmm. Like, all my people with me there get it. And having that um, inclusion and that acceptance and that um, just all having the same understanding mm -hmm. gives you such a safe space and such a natural feel to what you're doing. Because being at my college de tour and everybody talking about what they're doing with their psych degree, and well, I'm going to go to be a mortician. And then it's like, what? Blah, blah, blah. I don't understand. Well, I don't have to explain it when you're in mortuary school. Right. They get it. And you're making these very concrete friends for life, um, business associations, or associates, connections for down the road, everything. And so, it was such a just peaceful time in my life because I was not having to explain anything. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. Um, last question. Okay. What was your favorite and least favorite subject in mortuary school? Um, my least favorite was accounting. I hate accounting. I will never, nope. My favorite, I couldn't even tell you probably the topic, um, fifth quarter we did a dissection lab where we got a cadaver and we got mm -hmm. to just dissect, it came from the medical school, mm -hmm. um, so it was prepared for medical school and such and we got to dissect down to everything and that to me was fascinating because we don't dissect humans mm -hmm. as embalmers, we don't take out things we don't have to, it's very non-invasive. Mm -hmm what we do, and if somebody's been autopsied or tissue donor, we're putting them back together. So we're not like going in and pulling apart and worrying about things um, in that essence. So when we dissected, I mean, we were taking apart everything and being able to look for arteries, we can't just go digging for in a face of somebody that's right. going to be shown. So that was probably one of my favorite was the lab and the time for labs. Sometimes you would come in for lab and you just hang out because you don't know if there's going to be any bodies to work on, but you still have to be there the whole time. Yeah. And you really got close to that small, small group of people. And that was a really good time because we learned together. We went through a lot of firsts together. We encouraged each other. You had all different skill levels. You may have someone that has never seen a dead body until you're at school, but you may have a person <laughs> who has been embalming with their parent who's a funeral director since they were, you know, ten or something, I don't know. But forever they've been around the business. So you have this huge spectrum that you all have to work together and try to teach each other new things and the people who don't know anything are still gonna teach the people who do because they're seeing it through new eyes and different perspectives and, and things. So that was always fun too. Yeah. I raised my hand when you said that because I didn't see my first autopsy body oh, till school. in till school. And I remember us all, like all of the people that were in that lab, mm -hmm. I remember us going to Popeye's chicken for lunch and nobody was really eating anything because we were all so nervous. <laughs> and then yeah. walking into the lab and like the lights are off and you know, there's mirrors on the ceiling so you can see down into the cavity. and just being amazed yeah. at the inside of the human body, like that was mind blowing for me. It was almost like harps were playing in the background. <laughs> it was transcendent. And I remember in that moment thinking, oh my God, yes, this is, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. Because I thought I was gonna go home and try to scratch my eyes out after <laughs> seeing that. But for me, I love the psychology, the sociology, all the mind stuff, I yeah. love that. Um, I hated accounting. And I did not like chemistry because I didn't naturally grasp the information and I had to work really, 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 yeah. really hard. And then that, that made me struggle with the embalming a okay. little bit because you know, that's all chemistry. Yeah. So I loved anatomy, but I failed anatomy the first time around. And I don't know how because I loved it so much, but yeah. yeah. Um, any words of advice for those that are currently in mortuary school or wanting to go to mortuary school? Well, if you're in mortuary school, a lot of the information you're learning, you don't understand it till you can apply it. And you're not going to 
go into embalm going, oh, well, I need to look for the popliteal artery today. I'm going to look for the artery in the leg or in the arm or, you know, you don't use the exact terms, so you are really learning a lot for your exam, and that's what you're learning for. So don't put so much pressure on yourself that you are putting this information in for your whole lifetime. Understand that it's for this next step and just focus on that. Think baby steps, baby steps. If you're thinking of going to mortuary school, do not sign up for mortuary school until you get some time to maybe shadow. Invite a funeral director to lunch or to breakfast. Stop by and bring donuts. Get a conversation started with someone so you can maybe shadow around the funeral home, go with them on a funeral, go with them, sit in while they're meeting with the family, be with them while they're doing something. So you can spend some time and really see actually what a funeral director does in the full spectrum because the outside person sees such a small glimpse of what a funeral director truly does and you get into it and you're like, what is this schedule? And what do you mean you spend two hours on hold with insurance? And what do you mean you're doing all this paperwork and emails? And I just want to make warm and fuzzy moments happen with families. And that's not what this business is all about. Sorry. No. Yeah. So it's, it's really understanding in the whole spectrum before you sign up and go off to school. And you're let down by a business that you didn't give a chance because you didn't understand it before you went to school. So that was, that's my advice. Awesome. Thank you so much You're for awesome. chatting with me and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.